Look, they told me not to burn my bridges cause that shit could drown me. But I'd rather be alone and have some suckers round me. I got homies in the face like the suffer county. Send a bread, these bitches couldn't get a buck about me. She think I'm stingy for the bills, she the Winsky, I had white in the house. Mini plug out of Lawrence selling pints in the drought. Trying to get a cheaper rate to have me right in the south. Fighting demons, popping pills till the Vikings out. Ooh. Bottle girl, I make a touch of toes. You ain't got enough paper if the money folds. Running nose, bummy clothes, I had a bunch of those. Now I'm on the road trippy, I just did a dozen shows. Me, me out in Paris, established for being savage. Penthouse lavish, I've been balling like a marathon. Maybe look at Donna, drugs got me demonic. Selling dope outside the Sonic, mix a heavy with hypnotic. When you whip with a suit on, like past the gray poop on with a tool drawn. Fire at the driver, flip the Yukon. Potato on the 8 oh turn his hat into a halo. To the Tina shaking ass like Shakira. Congratulations on that. Yes, sir. <laughs> I opened up the show with it. All quarantine. Yeah. How, how's it going during your quarantine? It's all right, man. I'm staking out with my car right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Still recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as I can. I got I got an engineer who lets me um who lets me pop in and uh you know we're pretty safe with it. We social distance. Yeah. People move. <laughs> I've seen people in the studios with masks on. It's getting crazy out here. Yeah, it's, it's wild, man. I had to get out of New York, too. <laughs> Where are you now? Are you in uh, Massachusetts right now, or are you in New York? Yes, sir. Massachusetts? Yep. The home. The home state. That's a fact. So how long have you been it's sitting on that? Yeah. So how long have you been sitting on that new track that you just dropped? 
<clears throat> um, we only had it done for like two days right now. We just, I just pushed it out like as soon as it's done. But I got, I got, I got files and files and files and folders and folders and folders yeah. and this. High level rap. Yeah, HLO, man. Yeah. High level rap. That, that's why I've been commenting on your post bars because I'm for the bars. I don't play any of that drill crap that's going on or any of that mumble rap, whatever you call it. You got to come nice with it. Yeah, see, I like, I, I happen to like it all. I just know that I have a particular skill set that is called high level rap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not everybody has it. Actually, if you like really look deep into it, music is processed in the brain. The left side processes the melody. At the mm. same time, the right side processes the words and what's being said. You dig? Yeah. So some people's, the right side of their brain is just stronger than the left side or <laughs> vice versa. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is high level rap over here. Feel me? Yeah. Who else can do that high level rap? I know Dave East and Griselda can do it. Dave East, high level rap. Yeah. Griselda, everybody from the 90s pretty much is high level mm. rap. Joey Badass, High Level Rap, YBN Cordae, uh, the dudes I just did the song with, Mercules, Chris Webby, fucking um, OC The Real, there's a lot of High Level Rap out there. Yeah. How do you feel about the overall game right now, hip hop? Um, I feel like, I feel like it's in a good place, you know what I mean? Um, rappers are still at the top of the game, you yeah. feel me? Like, Drake is still the biggest rapper and he's a rapper. He could rap his ass off. He's high level rap. Kendrick is at the top of the game. J. Cole is at the top of the game. Once they dudes like that stop selling, it, it might get a little spooky. But as as of now, it's like, you know, that other shit is good for the radio and, and the club. But the high level rap shit still runs it. Yeah. Sales wise. And forever be the real hip hop is what you represent as well. And you just dropped a new track as well, Pandemic Pandemonium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just something in the moment. I feel like every artist should be able to um should be able to kind of show like you know what they're going through right there in that moment. Put that shit into words. Yeah. So how you about know? getting into more of a backstory about yourself? I watched your mini documentary Blanco, which was great and very informative on where you were. <laughs> And I highly rec I recommend for everyone to go check that out on your YouTube channel. And where, where can they check that out? What's your YouTube channel? Uh, my YouTube channel is Millie's, uh, Millie's Page. I believe that's the name of it. M-I-L-L-Y-Z Page. But, you know, just look me up and you'll see it. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to put that documentary together? Um, That was over the course of two days. Two days. Wow. Yeah. That's quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We whipped it up. Um, Boyan and, and Boy Vano, the people who did it, they're real like professional and official, so they crushed it. For sure. I liked it. It kind of reminded me of what Dave East did with Survival. The mini doc. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. East did it in his own in his own way. And, and he just dropped the um the, the tour footage, so yeah. everybody should check that out on his YouTube channel. We went on tour, we went overseas and shit like that. Yeah. You know? I, I have a question for you, actually, because I interviewed Davies up at the studio for St. John's University during the Survival Press Tour. Were you? I was there. You were there? Yeah, yeah. I was there. People were telling me, oh, there's, there's this white guy down there with Davies and he's got tattoos. I, I was like, that's got to be Millie's. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. You were there? My brothers, man, that's, that's lit, man. St. John's was lit. When did my, um, my, my homie's son go there? Oh, Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. You should have came up to the studio. I know, I know. One day, one day. We'll get to it once the room is over. Uh, yeah, I wanted to have you in the station. I put you on a 90s beat, have you freestyle. No doubt, yeah. no doubt. Put you on something like uh, Ed OG and the Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> you too young to know about that, man. Nah, gotta have it. No doubt, I gotta have it. Yeah. Who, who are some other Boston MCs that you grew up listening to? Um, like a lot of like, I didn't grow up listening to too many Boston MCs, you know what I mean? Like, to be honest. I know Big is a big more, inspiration. I listen to mad Boston MCs now. Yeah. Like, I listen to more Boston MCs than anything, you know, but growing up, it wasn't always like that. Yeah. I know Biggie's a big inspiration. Life After Death is one of your, probably your favorite album, I believe, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, your fa- what's, your favorite, what's your favorite track on that album? It fluctuates, but um, probably um, N words bleed just like us. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, that song goes hard. The double album. Yeah, double album. Yeah. Incredible. Would you ever drop a double album? Nah, not in this day and time. I mean, that's pretty much just dropping like a long ass playlist. So maybe who knows? Yeah. <clears throat> it's not the same as back then. I mean, back then that shit came with the package in. They had to really finesse the package in. Like it was a tangible thing that meant a lot, you know. Yeah. So how about we get into more of your backstory for my listeners who haven't checked it out? If you want to get in a little bit of detail. Yeah, like that's what you want to know. I'll just where you grew up. I grew up in uh, Cambridge, Mass. So, yeah. uh, like, you know, it's it's right next to Boston. Like, we get born in Boston. If you get shot, you go to Boston Hospital. Usually, you know, it's right there, right there. Like, um, I could walk to Boston in five minutes from my house, but it's a completely different city. Mm-hmm. Um, it's where Patrick. You got a Knicks hat on that Patrick Ewing. He's from my block. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we produce a lot of basketball players. Um. We produce a lot of talent in general. The first black girl to ever be on Baywatch was from uh, Cambridge. Goddamn Ben Affleck is from Cambridge. Matt Damon, Romeo Robinson, Michael Carter Williams, and Millie's, man. So it's a special city because it's 90% smaller than Boston, but we produce so much talent. And it's Harvard College. It's Harvard College, MIT, and then you also got 12 housing projects. So it's an incredibly amazing city. Anybody who knows New York, I would compare it to um, LES, the Lower East Side, after gentrification. Like, that's kind of how our shit is now. Like, they got the projects, but then it's super gentrified. Mm-hmm. Why do you think New Yorkers in Boston always have that tension? I think it's just sports. Because <clears throat> I came to New York and realized that that's there, but it's not there as much as people think. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um I meet a lot of Dominicans as Red Sox fans. You know what I'm saying? I remember going up in people's cribs, my, my homie's crib, and his father got all Red Sox shit. And I'm like in Queens, and I'm like, how is this possible? And they're like, oh, no, we, we ride with them on some Dominican shit. And then uh, I know, you know, Jadakus told me uh, growing up, his uncle always told him bet on Boston, like just as a sports gambler thing. But there's, there's always going to be the sports rivalry. But... I don't know, New York showed me a lot of love, so I just got super, I've been telling people, like, from Boston, like, don't burn your bridge by thinking, like, New York is going to hate on you and shit, like, go out there and try to get an opportunity, because dudes will fuck with you, you know? Now, when did you start, when did you start coming to New York? 2013. 2013. And that's when you dropped the album, I think it's, uh, it'll it'll come to me, I think it's, uh, Millie's and the Colombians, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, came, it came to me. I, I forget sometimes, but that's a classic. You had Jada yeah. Kiss on there. Yeah, yeah, that's when I met Jada. Um, and we did that song, and we've been rocking ever since. Now, how'd you guys meet? Um, <clears throat> I met him through my man, Seth Free. I had the song to plug, and we were thinking of who we could get on it. We were thinking right on that person. We ain't no way to go. And then we just, um, he was like, let me hit Kiss. Kiss picked up the phone. And then, uh, yeah, it was a money thing. I, I mean, it was love, but, you know, I paid him for the feature at first, but then it just turned into, like, a relationship. He started seeing my work ethic and things of that nature. And, um, what, yeah, are some, what, are, here, what are some things that he's told you that inspired you that he likes about your rhymes? Well, it's even more than my rhymes. Like, he comments a lot on the fact that I can sing. Mm-hmm. If you hear the song with me on his album, I break into like a little singing with the shit. Like he likes me as an all around artist and and that's what um made me gravitate to, you know, doing a situation with him in the first place, because I don't want to be boxed in as just like a rapper, 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 because I could do a lot. I'm a very musical person, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You can do it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that's the trap. Fact, the thing that I like, I'm actually about to drop one of my first um all singing videos. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I know, I know before you even were interested in hip hop, you were more interested in the R and B, listening to the '90s R and B. Yeah, you really do your research. Yeah, you know? that's why. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not doing my job if I don't do my research, right? 
Yeah, R and B, man. That's what that was my first love. Like, I'm a late eighties baby, and um, late eighties. How about guys? Yeah. You listen to Guy and Teddy Riley. Nah, nah. I'm um, I'm like like boys to men, like Drew Hill, like Mariah Carey, like Whitney Houston. Like I liked all the Keep big sweat. like uh, ballad. You know what I mean? The ballad type shit. Yeah. Keep sweat. Um, that, that was really my tip. Yeah, yeah, keep sweat, shit like that. All of that. Yeah. Would you do a song with any of those artists? Of course, of course. I love the um it would just have to be right, you know what I mean? Yeah. No. I don't want to do it just to do it. I don't want to do anything just to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you feel Music about the, how do you feel about the state of R and B right now? I don't like it because I feel like the shit back in the day was so like loving to women. That shit actually had me like grow up being very respectful to women. You know what I mean? And um, the shit kind of changed. Where rap told you to say fuck a bitch and dog a bitch out type shit, which is cool too because you need that too because there's bitches out there and there's women who need to be treated with respect. But at the end of the day, like R and B used to be that balance, so it was like you had. This 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 music that just uplifted women and it uplifted love and shit. And now they're kind of doing the same shit as rap, so there's no more balance. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I don't want to hear this this poor champagne on a bitch's head on fucking <laughs> on a rap song and then hear the same shit on an R and B song. Like, no, I need balance in my life. I'm a balanced person. You dig? Yeah. So yeah, I'm not exactly. How do you feel about like these R and B singers like what's his name Jacquees who calls himself the king of R and B and all that stuff? I mean, shit, he might be the king of R and B right now. Who knows who's the king of R and B? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think the weekend is the king of R and B, probably. You think so? I mean, I guess I'm not even too in tune with what's going on. I know Tory Lanez got good shit. Um. I don't know, like, yeah, like, I know Tory Lane's got this shit. I know he just dropped the project, too. Yeah, um, I don't know who's doing it. Miguel was fired, but he's not been around like that, so, yeah. yeah. Now, how, what would you say you got your foot in the door of the industry? Around what year? <laughs> it depends, because I've really been doing this shit since, like, 2010 and, um, 2010. maybe even 2009, and, like, I always been around some industry. It just depends what you mean by like got my foot in the door because there's kind of levels, you know what I mean? So yeah. I always been around some industry people, but you know, I would say music didn't get really serious to me until like 2016 because that's when I got on the BET Cypher. Yeah. And that's when my shit started going up because I was on national TV with no record label, no nothing, and I started off the BET Awards, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And what was that experience like? Nah, that was incredible. You know, I earned it. Um, I showed up three years in a row. And um, I showed up three years in a row, and uh, I kept waiting for maybe somebody to not show up and hoping that they had a void to fill. And I was just ready with verses. And I had to spit my verse for the BET staff. Like, I had no PR, no nothing, no no nothing man. Man, I'm just there like I knew a cameraman so I had basically snuck in the building type of shit and I just wrapped my shit and they were like alright we'll give you a try you know what I mean and then it dropped Charlemagne said I had the best verse um different people like you know what I mean it, it, it just took it took off from there and that was my first real industry look yeah you were up there with Pun's son Chris Rivers yeah with Pun's son Chris Rivers with John John the Don Jazz the Rapper and um Damn, what's my man's name? Oh, your old Drew. Mm. Yeah, so all high level rap, you know? Yeah, DJ Scratch was on the turntables. Yes, sir. Yeah. The legend. <laughs> Did he say anything to you? <laughs> you do <know> your shit. <laughs> you like Nagar. Hey, man. I love 90s hip hop. I got to keep that real hip hop going. That's what my show's about. And I see what you're doing. I like that. No doubt, no doubt. High level rap. High level, HLO. What was your favorite freestyle on a radio show so far? Did I hit? Yeah. 
My favorite one might not be the best one, you know what I'm saying? But I probably like um I probably like the Funk Flex one because I knew because what it took me to kind of do it, you know what I mean? Like it it wasn't a guarantee. And then I got the call I got the call at about six thirty at night and they said No, no, I got the call at about eight thirty at night and they said, Can you come at six thirty the next day? So I came in at six thirty. I usually have a shot before I do these things, you know what I mean? To calm my nerves and shit like that. It's getting easier now, you know what I mean? Now I could probably do this shit straight sober. <laughs> but um I uh yeah, so so I started drinking. It's like six thirty. Flex is in there with just Blaze talking for like an hour, so now it's seven thirty. Mm-hmm. Around seven thirty, Fat Joe comes in. And so I'm like, oh damn, he's about to do a whole shit with Fat Joe. So me and Fat Joe, I'm like talking to Fat Joe. It's my first time, and we really kicking for like an hour and a half type shit about hip hop, life, everything. And then after that, Fat Joe goes in and does his shit. You know what I mean? And that takes another. Basically, by the time I was ready to rap, it was like eleven o'clock. So that's like the equivalent to ice and the kicker in sports. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm now I'm like, damn, I'm forgetting my own verses. I'm not as sharp as I was. I've been drinking this shit. I feel like I might start slurring, but I still went in there and I did my thing and I actually dropped the ball. I, I fucked up on the line, but I caught it. By the grace of God, I caught it and, and, and I kept rapping and, and people liked it. You know, I think it was a, a great freestyle. Yeah. When you see Funk Flex on those freestyles, he just kind of makes a face and he sits there and listens. What did he say to you off the mic when the freestyle was over? I'm curious. He doesn't say a lot. Uh, he doesn't? Nah, Flex is like an OG legend, so it's like, he just be like, yeah, my brother. No doubt, my brother, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going, like, Sway have a whole pep talk with you and shit. Like, Sway will tell you about life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everything. You went up Flex. there and killed the freestyle on his show, too. Yeah, I, I did Sway a couple times. Yeah. And I think you that was that the freestyle you name dropped that six nine bar. Yeah, no, that was on static. Oh, that was on static. Okay, it, that that's the one that was over the Jay Z beat, right? Mhm. Yeah, I liked what you said about six nine. Yeah, he's a rat bastard. Yeah, he's a sewer rat. That's what I call him. That's a fact. He's a sewer rat. People, that's I know a he, fact. he's pretty, pretty shy. <laughs> People are saying he's coming home soon, right? Probably. No. Yeah. You know. You think, I always be in jail, minus the boss. Yeah. You, you think? Oh, so you, 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 think you know what I mean? You lost your integrity. Do you, Do you think that people will still make records with him after being a snitch? Yeah, yeah, man. Motherfuckers don't got no morals. I come from a different set of shit. Like when you look me up on the internet, like it, it'll, it'll set you know. I just come from a different... I, I've been put under a lot of pressure, man, and, and I didn't fold because I knew what I was signing up for. Like, the second... If you get in the car with somebody and you say you got a gun, you know you got a gun, now you are you are involved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, whatever you're doing, if someone's doing crime around you, the second you decide to live a criminal lifestyle, you got to be accountable for that because without accountability, we are nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I don't fuck with nobody that doesn't have accountability, whether, you know, whether it's about some street shit or, or just whatever. If you fucked up, man, own that, you know? Period. Yeah. What would you say is your favorite bar that you ever wrote? Hmm. Damn, that's a tough one. I don't know, bro. I might have a favorite verse. Yeah. Favorite verse? Yo, I got so many fire verses, bro. It's hard. Yeah, like, it I, is. I promise you, like, I like talking to strangers. There's a song on. If anybody ever wants to get introduced to my music, listen to Talking to Strangers. It's on Blanco too, and um, I went crazy on that shit, man. I just really spilled my life on that. Yeah. That's it. The thing I love about your music, too, is you can feel the pain and emotion when you're spitting. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't get that same effect. And I was having a conversation the other day with my friend who I do a podcast with, and he was even telling me, 
you don't get that message and you just don't get that feeling when you listen to the hip hop today. But you still have that feeling in your music where you can you just feel what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what that's what I really do it for, bro. That's what this shit is about. Man, music is emotion. So I'm trying to get that through. Like, I can't even really. What I do is like, if I do write a verse, I'll go in the booth and I'll read it off my phone. But I'm only doing that until I remember what it is. So then I could tran like do the verse over just with my mind so I could really have that emotion flowing because you can't get the same emotion when you read it. So I like it to transfer the music like that. Like I like to go in there and I mean what I say. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy. Yeah, and it's transparent in your music. Yeah. You feel that if you turn it on. And you also have a project with Static Selecta. How did yeah, you, so you guys meet? Um, he's from the area, he's from Massachusetts, so, you know, that's just how it goes, like, he heard about me on the scene, and then when I started coming to New York, you know, Static is doing shit every night, like, that's the one you could go link with, you know what I mean, when this shit is all over, like, he's, he's Man. out in the city, so if you're ambitious about hip-hop, you could go link with him, and they'll say what's up to you, you might got it, you might think he don't like you the first two, three, four times you meet him type shit, uh -huh. but then... You know, he'll eventually take a liking to you. Not you, just I'm just saying anybody in general. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's that's from that's your, how it was. That's from I your just kept, I just kept hanging around. That's what you got to do, man, in this music industry, man. Be around the right people. Force yourself to be around the right people. Show face. Mm -hmm. It's important. It's called getting your face clean. Like, you want to have it so your, your, your face card gets you through the door. Oh, I know him. Now, I, they might not even know your fucking name, but they know your face. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And before this whole coronavirus thing came about, you were supposed to go on tour with Davies for survival. Yeah. Now, what can happen with that oh, now? Lord. I mean, I'm sure we'll, um, I'm sure we'll reschedule it. You know, who knows what's gonna happen? Though. A few days ago, like when I released that pandemonium. Track, I was bugging the fuck out about this shit. Yeah? I don't get why people have been taking it like a joke in the beginning, though. I don't get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's crazy, but... You no, know, yeah. I was thinking, like, with all this martial law shit, I, I watch too many movies. But now, I'm a little calm about this shit. I think it's going to blow over. Yeah. I, I, I hope it does, so we can get back to our normal lives. I'm doing my show from my house now. And I don't, I don't know, you're probably recording out of your house, maybe, right? Nah, we're going to do this shit again, too. So don't ask me all this shit, man, because when, when, when we get back, right, I'm going to come up there and we're going to do it. No, uh, I, can, I can ask you any, I'll come up with a set of new questions for you, don't worry. Uh, I bet. We'll, we'll have more stuff to talk about. But get, get into government cheese. I want to hear what that recording process was like. Man, that was crazy. That was, um, I went one day on a random day to D Block Studios that don't exist no more. But, um, I went in Yonkers. It was like 2 p.m. I just went to the studio. It was only Kiss and Nino Man there. And they were playing the, the beat. Originally, it was PNB Rock on the hook. Mm. And he had this hook. He was like, Look me in my eyes. You can see the pain, the pain that I've been through. There's so many things I don't know came. They still trying to hold me back. I don't know what's going on. It's like nowhere to run to. But I know somebody take a hold on. Yo, this shit yeah. is so hard. And so I'm like, damn, this shit's crazy. Yeah. And, and I seen Kiss and Neil on there writing. I was like, yo, Kiss, I could write to this shit. He was like, yeah. So boom, I'm writing. Kiss writing. Neil on there writing. <clears throat> We end up going and laying the shit that same day, um, and it's and this was like the summer of 2018. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so the track just sat around for a minute, and then finally they were telling me, "Yo, the shit's gonna make the album. It's gonna make the album." And a week before the album, they said, "Yo, PNB Rock doesn't know who wrote that hook for him." Or who the writer that helped them on the shit or whatever it was. Basically, you know, that's the end of the fucking Fortune 500 company. They can't drop some shit and get sued. So, PMB Rock, the, like the song was in the air. Like, we couldn't even release it. But they said, yo, it's a possibility Des Loaf would jump on it. And that's what she did. She came through, like, in the clutch and she smoked it. 
fucking obliterated. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was lit. Yeah. I love that song. That song's great. I saw the clip yeah. from the album release party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looked, that looked like a great time. Yeah, it was a good time, but that's when they were starting to talk about Corona, so I was still a little geek the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> social distancing. Yeah, there was no social distancing in New York until like a week after that. Yeah, no. I bet you Because I'm already a German folk, so. Oh, I am too. I got to keep everything clean. I, I can't, I, I, I hate that. Especially if you're sick, get away from me. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can't deal with that. But what would you say is more of a, an accomplishment? Getting Jada Kiss on your album or being on Jada Kiss's album? Come on, bro. You know the answer to that question. Getting them on your album? Hell no. Being on his album. Being on his album. That shit. Like, as a rapper, that's a dream. You know what I mean? Yeah. Motherfuckers can't tell me shit. I got a 16 on Jada Kiss album. Suck my dick. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. Like, or, yeah, and that's a blessing. A lot of people can't do that and won't do that. They won't have that opportunity. A lot of people won't do that. Can't and won't. Nope. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah, what it is. That's, that's, you know, that's what I do. If I got a 16 on his album. I'm not singing. I'm not doing no... Patois, I'm rapping. We're rapping. one of the greatest rappers ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's your, what's your favorite Jada Kiss record? Huh? What's your favorite Jada Kiss record of all time? <laughs> um. Damn. These questions be having me stuck because I like so much shit. Um. With Jasmine Sullivan, um, you're the only one I'm on. Whatever you be, smoking gun. Smoking gun. Was that off the? Is that off the last kiss? I'm trying to think. The album has a white has a white cover. I know that. Uh, yeah, kiss kiss of death. I think. Kiss of death. Okay. You're the only one I'm on. Oh my god, that shit. That shit would bring tears to your face. Man, yeah, that's fire. That's it's pure fire. Yeah, that shit is fuego. Fueguito. And from the mini doc, you see how you control the crowd on stage. What would you say is your favorite performance that you've done? New York, besides Boston, because I got to say Boston, because that's where my fans are. Mm hmm. Like the majority, like I really like my fans really come out for me in Boston and like I sell shit out and they go fucking ballistic. So my favorite performance was the Millies and French shit. I brought out um Freeway, China Mac, O T the Rail, Fat Boy S S C, um I feel like so many more people, but I'm blanking on it. I'm blanking on it. But um Yeah, man, like I brought out so many people and sold out like that was incredible but other than that my favorite performance like I really bodied the PlayStation Theater with Dave East on um, on the survival tour yeah and, and it was only like 15 20 minutes set but I went crazy I felt like like because there's 2,000 I think it's 2,500 people in there and to do an acapella in front of that whole crowd and nobody's speaking like everybody's just in tune with your words nobody's you know what I mean? You're not, yeah. like, it's, the only sounds you're hearing is, ooh, ah, shit like that. You're not hearing, like, it's hard to silence a whole building, 2,200 people, whatever the fuck it is. You know what I mean? That's yeah. tough, man. With no beat. Just acapella, like, I was slaying shit around the whole country like that. Yeah. My shit with us. I want to get into a quick sports segment here, especially with Boston sports, and you got to ask, I got to ask this one. How do you feel about Tom Brady? Leaving the Patriots and going to the Buccaneers. I feel like the Patriots should have paid him. They they owed him more than that. What Tupac said about Biggie, he, he owed me more than to turn his head and act like he ain't no motherfuckers going to blow my head off. That's <laughs> how Brady feels right now. They owed him more than that. To act like, get the fuck out of here. Like, I'm, 
I'm not jacking that shit at all. I think, um, did my what really go out? I think, um, I think they should have paid that man. I think he's going to win in, 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 in Tampa Bay against all odds because Brady's the GOAT. Can't say fucking Patriots and don't say Brady. The greatest football player of all time. Ever, ever, ever. Are you fucking treat him like that. Are you still going to be rooting for the Patriots after that? How this Boston sports shit goes? Yeah. I can't lie. It's like, I could say no, but, but I will. Yeah. <laughs> I will. You know what I mean? Like, when they get into the playoffs and shit, or like, when they have a good run, I will. If they suck out the gate, I might just be rooting for fucking Tampa Bay because Brady is the Patriots. <laughs> They have a great chance of winning this year. They got a great wide receiver core, Mike Evans, Chris Goodwin. Then they got the tight end, O.J. Howard. They're looking good. It's Brady Bird Belichick. Yeah. It's a civil war. Yeah. Well, I hope my pain and suffering will come to an end because I'm a Jets fan, so I was glad to see Brady. Nah, 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 nah. I ain't going to hold you. Your pain and suffering is going to continue yeah. with the Jets and the Knicks. It will. Shout out to the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I got so many Knicks fan homies. Like man, it's a tough world, man. man. Big L. I'm from New York and never was a fan of the Knicks. From New York and never. You you got to have them though. Yeah, I'm a Knicks fan. It's rough. I don't think we're ever gonna win. But the last time the Knicks were in the playoffs, fuck they, Dolan, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the last time the last time the Knicks made the playoffs, we did beat the Celtics though. Yeah, but the last time y'all won a championship was in nineteen seventy three. Yeah, it's rough. I wasn't born. Way it's an all type of semifinals, 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 yeah. championships, finals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Celtics are third in the, in the conference, but now with the whole coronavirus thing, who knows how that's gonna play out? It's, a, it's old. It's yeah. old. They don't have to start new. Yeah. And the Red Sox are in, having bad luck here with Mookie Betts leaving. The Red Sox, right? That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. But I don't really be into baseball. The Red Sox got to go to the playoffs for me to tune in. Yeah. Same with the Bruins. Yeah. Bruins were supposed to make it really far this year, even win the Cup. I fuck with um. I probably fuck with the Bruins more than the Red Sox. It's crazy. Dude. Yeah. I like that. But I only watch those teams when they get in the playoffs. Other than that, it goes. Celtics, 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 like I'm a really a diehard Celtics fan, yeah. like for real. And the BT like, sniper, not, you had the Larry Bird jersey on. Yeah, I got I got all type of shit, man. Like, I, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm a real diehard Celtics yeah. fan. Favorite Celtics player of all time? Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce, number thirty-four. Yeah, that has to be because you know he, you know, you're talking about a guy who who was stabbed eleven times. Came back and played all 82 games. Went through the tough times and went against Kobe's, LeBron's. Took a championship back to Boston. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he's different. <Yeah>. He, <laughs> he's different. Like, they try to play him on, like, Twitter. Like, he's not one of the greatest ever. You know, another suck my dick. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, what would you say? Pierce is a dog. I got Pierce. Then I got KG second. Then I got Isaiah Thomas third. Then I got Rondo fourth. Then I got Marcus Smart fifth. It's my Celtics all time. Mark Marcus Smart, yeah. Ray Allen too. He left. Yeah. Went to the Heat. He left when he didn't have to, so nah. <laughs> oh man, but I think Boston sports, they're still gonna be on the rise. You still got Belichick, so. Oh yeah, no, we're, we're gonna we demand greatness out here, so yeah, we'll be out. So tell me, Millie's, what is next for you? Because I know you're always putting on Instagram, be be ready for stuff to just drop any minute. Yeah, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just drop a lot of shit right now. Right now, I'm really just focused on the on the streaming aspect because it shows you like when the economy goes down, then you gotta have that streaming booming. Yeah. So you know, Spotify, YouTube. Just dropping shit, man, over and over. You know, I'm going to heat it up. I was focused on Instagram before all of this shit because it's like, you know, I'm in these places taking pictures, doing this and that. Fuck all that, man. I'm just dropping music now, yeah. period. I want to hear some boom bap. 
Millie's boom back. I want to hear some more. Yo, the Saints, if anybody wants to hear that too, Saints and Sinners is a whole boom bat album of Millie's. Yeah. Period. And the song I just dropped is a whole boom bat type. You know what I mean? Fair, so. Oh, yeah. Great Poupon. Yeah. Great Poupon. Yes, sir. Fire. Like, Super cool. Flavor. Yeah. And I'm from Connecticut, so you were on with Chris Webby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how did you guys link up? Um, back in the day, I was supposed to go on like a tour with him type shit, and there was some like discrepancy uh, uh, about. So I, basically, it fell through, and it was a miscommunication, and I was tight about that shit at the time, and I kind of approached him in South by Southwest, and, and 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 got some shit off my chest. But then after that, you know, we just um we kept running into each other in the same circles, and and now it only makes sense to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think it's easier to be a white rapper in today's uh, time? No, not, not my type of white rapper. Like, it's easy. Like, there's certain white rappers that just gain a, a, a fan base because they're white, literally. Like, there's a whole pocket of people in America that'll just, like, it's weird. It's like racist people that, like, just want to listen to a white rapper. Like, <laughs> that's it. Like, they won't <laughs> listen to no. Because you get <laughs> crazy to me. I don't know. But there's certain white rappers that just jump in and get this whole pocket because they want to listen to rap, but they don't want it from a black person, which is like, you know, you should never be allowed to fucking stream hip hop. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Do you but, think um, Eminem set that so, standard? For those type of white artists, yeah. yeah. But for me, I think it's a little tricky. Like, I grew up in a black neighborhood. People still try to get, like, familiar with it. it you know, it, it's just different. It's, it's not the norm. So people feel what they don't understand, you know? Yeah. No, but Millie's, anything else you want to get out on the show here tonight? Now's your time. That's it, man. I'm coming back after the quarantine. <laughs> Post-Rona. Man. That's what we're going to call it. Post-Rona. Po- I'm coming po- back. Post-Rona. You got to stay safe out here. Yes, sir. You need, to, you need to do a tour at St. John's. Do a press tour. Yeah, yeah. I'm out there, man. I, I got to come out there, dog. Yeah. Do the Q&A event like they... Respect St. John's, too. I got to fire St. John's jersey. Five. Yeah? What player? Yeah, what color y'all wear? Y'all, call it, y'all wear red? Yeah. Red, right? Red. Yeah, I got a fire St. John's jersey. I was just making sure. Like, I'm like, hold on. <laughs> you know what I mean? What player so, is it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know none of that. I can tell you the number. I got to go look at it. It's at my crib, you know what I mean? But I've been at it a couple years. Yeah. Well... I just buy shit for how the, 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 the colors look. Like, I don't know. No, I can't tell you. It was St. John's. Carmelo Anthony went there, right? Mm, he went to Syracuse. Oh, see? Who went to, who went to St. John's? Metal World Peace. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. gangster. That's, that's, that's legendary. Yeah. He's a, he's a legend. Chris Mullen. We want to throw back to the Warriors from back in the day. Type shit. No doubt. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'll be up there, though, bro. Yeah. You're a great interviewer, too, man. I appreciate that, man. You're doing your research. That. Yeah, man. man, I appreciate that. And we got to keep this real hip-hop going. Bars only. Now, I call, this, mi- I call this microwave rap that's out now. It's microwaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We serve a full-course meals. Yeah. You did? Homemade. No doubt. Homemade. My boy, man. Salute. Millie, salute to you, and you know I'll get the records going in the rotation up at the station too, and just playing it on my show. I might go live on IG, mix some mix some songs here. I'll throw your track in the mix too. Yes, sir. Let's get it, bro. All right, Millie, I want you to have a good night and. Baby, you gonna post this online? Of course. What do you think I'm, do- right, I'm, right. I'm doing this for myself? I'm just sitting in my. In my studio here, just want to have well, a. Well, I didn't know if you want some type of stream or shit. I don't know what. I yeah, don't know no, the street. The sh- I don't know what the fuck. Yeah, but, um, you know this shit is really weird with Corona. Man, yeah, um, I bet my boy. Let's get it. Yeah, for sure. All right, Millie, take care. All right. Yes, sir. Stay safe. Talking points is not true. Every politician on the string getting puppeted for years by billionaires. This pandemic pandemonium got you really in fear. And I don't play the only thing that you hear is murder, murder, murder. So as I roll the pressure and inhale it, I speak my mind before the government. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Stay tuned. Monday night, local war club. We'll be talking about it new album, Second and None. Shout out to Millie's for calling into the show. Make sure you'll get a hit track. Pandemic Pandemonium. And of course, Grey Poupon, which just dropped. Follow Millie's on Instagram and Twitter at Millie's, M I L L Y Z. Follow me on Instagram 
and Twitter at the real Matt T H E R E E L M A N Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max. Thank you to everyone tuning in. Stay safe. I mean a while and she the only bears on her only fans from a lonely man. Until this pandemic ends, that's her only plan. Pull the blame, I'm out the window with a text at. You ain't got enough authority with your rank at. Ladies acting like they don't know where the bank's at. When you better than the best, how you rank that? I hope that everybody swam it up. Show resistance if they come to school, your family up. I ain't crazy, I ain't crazy, I ain't crazy. This is the pandemic pandemonium. Yeah.